In the last movie, we were able to successfully create this top portion, except we don't have these Facebook and Twitter icons up there. And what we want to do is take a look at how we can get these icons into the HTML document over the next couple movies. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to come back to the HTML document. And inside the HTML document, we're going to reference a class that's built into the F2FW framework. We're going to take a look at this class in detail in just a bit, but the first thing that I want to do is just update the HTML. So down here in this section where we have the paragraph that's floating to the right, we have the Facebook and Twitter links. I want to go ahead and update these anchor elements with some class attributes. And the class that we're going to use is one that's called ICO. And again, this ICO class is part of the F2FW framework. However, we need to be able to distinguish the differences between the Facebook and the Twitter icons. So we're going to add a second class, which is going to be ICO-Facebook. And then we're going to do the same thing down here for Twitter. So we're going to add a class attribute. And again, we're going to reference the ICO class, which again is part of the F2FW framework. And then we're going to create our own custom class called ICO-Twitter in this case. So that updates the HTML document. That's great. You can go ahead and save it. What I want you to do is come over to style.css. And inside of style.css, I want you to expand the F2FW code. And I want you to do a find and replace. And we're looking for a class called a.ico. If you go ahead and click find next, it should highlight it for you. You can then close the find and replace dialog box. And what I'd like to do is just kind of break this out so it's a little bit easier to read so you can see the properties associated with this class. There's quite a few. And ultimately, this gives us the ability to work with icons in a much easier and simpler fashion. We wouldn't have to write this class again and again or create different classes that kind of do the same thing. We can just reuse this one class that was set up for us. So I'm just about done here separating this out. And if we take a look at what's happening here, we're setting the color to a transparent color. And this important element here will override any other property. Then we're indenting the text, which is going to remove the text from the screen. It's indented to essentially a negative 10,000 pixels, which will just ensure that the user will never see the text. And then there's some other properties here. The overflow is set to hidden. The cursor is set to pointer. The display is set to block. And then we're zeroing out the line height, font size, and border. So just so you're aware of what this class does. And you'll notice that there's a couple different classes. Not only do we have anchor ICO, but there's also anchor arrow and anchor BTT for button. So we can reuse these elements over and over and over again when it's associated with other types of content. But in this case, we're going to be using the ICO class. So now that we're a little bit more familiar with that, what we want to be able to do is create the images that we're going to be using. So if we come back to Photoshop, we can take a look at the two icons. What we need to be able to do here is create an icon that's at 100% opacity when the end user is hovering over it. Otherwise, it should be set to 40% opacity. And again, this is something that can be achieved using CSS properties. So we don't have to create duplicate images of the icons. We can just create one image and then set the 40% opacity level from CSS directly. So that's going to save us a little bit of load in terms of making fewer requests to the server, ultimately creating a more efficient site. So what we need to do is we need to create the image. And the image right now is set to 16 pixels by 16 pixels. In the next movie, what we're going to do is we're going to select the Marquee tool. And with the Marquee tool, we're going to isolate these two icons, save a PNG file, and then use that PNG file within our CSS.